Hello everyone, Crydax here, and welcome back to our Factorio Space Age playthrough. Still rocking the scarf because we're still on the cold planet, but it is a new day for me and I've kind of forgotten everything we're doing, so I was just getting reacquainted with Factoriopedia here. I believe we're working on building some cryogenic plants right now, and then with those cryogenic plants, we can then start to work towards making cryogenic science. So we're actually pretty close to that because I already have the fluorine... Um, harvested that's what we did in the last episode and with the fluorine then we can make uh fluoro ketones which are used to do things so anyway uh let's make some cryogenic plants first also uh simeon what what are my goals in this run that's a good question and i think it's good to review that for the youtube series as well what, like why are we here what are we doing where are we going the primary goal is to win where this is the, our first playthrough, you know, in, in Space Age, and our primary goal is to win. I do also have a secondary goal, which I imagine we will accomplish, of taking the fight to the biters just with some better, with some of the new weaponry. So I want to get railguns and artillery and Tesla turrets and have some fun with that. Um, that's more of a just for fun thing. I don't actually really need to expand the base. We've still got all kinds of resources we haven't even tapped into. And then when you mix that with having these new drills, it's like, we're never gonna need more than that. So the real question is like, are we gonna go for a legendary base or not? Are we gonna work on legendaryifying everything and continuing to kind of work towards a mega base or are we gonna be happy with victory? And it kind of depends on a couple factors. I am, kind of excited to return to Pyanodons, but I'm not sure if I want to do that yet or not. And so I kind of have to figure out um, how I'm going to shift, like, what am I trying to say? There's two things I'm trying to say. I'm going to have to figure out how I want to keep playing Factorio or if I want to take a little break or not. And then I also am trying to figure out stream versus video wise. For those of you who don't know, um, it wasn't that long ago. I guess it's a few months now that I went full time content creator but then Factorio came and I kind of went to like only doing Factorio content as my, as the thing because it's kind of the, the major game of my channel and, and all that. And so I'm going back to kind of the normal flow, which is what I want to be the normal flow moving forward, which is my stream games and my YouTube video uploads are separate. Now, I don't know if I'll still be streaming to YouTube Live when I do that or not. That's a decision I have yet to make. But either way, the regular uploads to the YouTube channel are going to be videos that were not recorded during a live stream. Whereas right now, they're coinciding. And, you, you know, you guys from future YouTube are seeing, like, the Twitch and YouTube Live comments on the side, etc. Like, that's not going to be the case when I go back to what I consider to be my normal thing. And so I haven't decided exactly which games I'm going to be doing on stream versus off stream. I, I will say, and by the time this video comes out, you'll probably have already seen me streaming this, which is uh, Path of Exile 2 is a game that I'm planning to put some hours into. I'm pretty excited about it. Um, and then I'm also considering doing an XCOM Long War of the Chosen, which is the Long War mod for XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. Uh, so there's a lot of words to that. I'm really excited about a playthrough for that. I'm not sure if that will be a live or pre-recorded. And then I also am excited to return to Pyanodons as well. And I'm also excited to play the mod pack Exotic Industries, which I don't know that will At some point I'll play that. I don't know if that'll be next or not, but uh, I also don't know if it's updated for 2.0. So that's kind of all the, all the logistics stuff, meta channel stuff. Um, do I think asteroid reprocessing or recyclers are better for legendary quality? Uh, I don't know exactly what you mean by that question. I don't know what you mean by... Asteroid... Like, in what case are those two things competing with each other? I guess I, I'm, I'm confused on how those are two different choices for the same concept. But uh, anyway, okay, so let's make some cryogenic plants. Uh, wait, oh, 
okay, okay. I got really scared. I was like, I know we got superconductors. I just didn't put any in my inventory. So I think I can just handcraft them, but maybe... Oh, you can't. Okay. Well, in that case... I don't know what happened to my assembling machine button here, but... I think I can just do this, right? Um, and then bring some heat over. And then we do cryogenic plant. And that's literally it. Uh, I don't have any quality modules. Otherwise, I would, because having a couple uncommons might be nice, but. And what are we doing here? I guess I'll just feed it manually. Because then as soon as I get one, we're going to replace with one. Because then we get that extra 50% productivity bonus. Wait, no we don't. Just kidding. This just has a lot more slots. That's, that's right. Oh, but that doesn't mean certain recipes won't get that extra 50%. Because I can't put this in here. Interesting. All right, let's also appreciate the graphics for a moment. Ah, oh, so beautiful. So beautiful. The goop flowing around in there. Cool. Ooh, but it's all hot inside. Why does that door open up? Are we, are we cooling off? It's interesting that door opens up, but doesn't seem to have a purpose in opening. Um, it's just showing off. It's just strutting its stuff. Asteroid crushers can have quality modules. Yeah, they can, but I don't really understand how that would be better than just doing quality stuff on a planet. Um, yeah, I, I'm guessing that's not the way to do it. Maybe I'm wrong, I don't know. There's a lot of math to Space Age and actually solving the the correct answers to some of these questions. At the end of the day, most of it's gonna come down to preference and how you wanna play, but once you've decided to optimize for a certain thing, there probably are some mathematically correct answers. Whoa, I didn't realize. There's rocket part productivity? What? In my mind, we wouldn't need it because we already have productivity on each of the parts that make rocket parts. But then you can combine that with actual rocket part productivity, and now you've got even more... I mean, rockets are basically free in the late game then. Because once you've done even just like 10 of these researches, plus putting productivity modules into the rocket silos, you're already getting down to needing, what, like 18? 17? I'm thinking triple productivity right now. You only need 17 of each item to make a to launch a rocket. Like that's basically nothing. And then on top of that, those items, you know, get higher and higher productivity as you go. So, yeah, rockets get pretty cheap for sure. Um Okay, so anyway, we have cryogenic plants now. What are we doing with them? Um we can make steam condensation. You can do the regular sulfuric acid recipe, the regular plastic recipe, and the regular sulfur recipe. So sulfuric acid gets a lot more productive um, because you can do eight modules instead of three. So in terms of productivity, you're getting more than double the productivity bonus in a cryogenic plant. Um... I can also do this recipe, this solid fuel, fuel, solid fuel, uh, solid fuel and ammonia recipe. Also, what's the default crafting speed on these? One. Okay, so we are double the speed. That's nice. Uh, what about power usage? 1.55 versus 217. So these do use more power per item produced um, than a chemical plant but that's obviously you that's usually not the thing you care about and did i just notice these are five by five <gasps> these are five by five they're chonkers because aren't the emps only four by four am i remembering that right yeah the emps are only four by four foundries are five by five yeah foundries are five by five okay um anyway 
let me... So if I make this two squares wider... Hmm. Which I kind of want to do... Because getting more free rocket fuel, aka more free heat and more free power, sounds kind of nice. But that's going to require setting this up properly. Okay, so. Oh, wow. Even just the, this recipe can be done that way. Ammonia rocket fuel. Wait a second. Oh, oh, rocket fuel. Right, I use the solid fuel, I add more ammonia, and then I get rocket fuel out of it. Which is a huge... Well, is it? We're using ten times as much ammonia. Mm, I guess with productivity modules, we're still probably net power positive on that. Obviously, it also saves us a ton of crude oil for the megajoules I'm producing. But if you're not considering the crude oil, this is actually losing you power per ammonia. Not that we need to worry about ammonia spending, but, you know, I'm just thinking out loud here. Uh, okay, anyway. So, I'm wondering if, because of this being a bigger building, I'm wondering if we can make it work without needing as much hassle. Because I can do this, which I couldn't have done on the other one. And that means we don't need a second outer pipeline, which is super nice. Which means I can remove this part. And we can just have that um which is the ammonia which why does this not have ammonia in it because <laughs> we don't have enough ammonia because we have oh we have too much ice aha we are we are now needing to overflow on ice which is its own challenge isn't it Hmm. Um. So, if I need to overflow on ice, and I'm already prioritizing water production, which you cannot do in the cryogenic plant, by the way. Um, Calcite legendary stone loop? Oh, I'm curious about what that is. Yeah, I mean, you can, you can certainly get legendary stuff from space for cheap, but it's also cheap to mine stuff out of the ground with those, you know, epic or legendary big drills. I feel like, at least on Reddit, I've seen a lot of people getting really obsessive about the, like, stuff in space is infinite. And it's like people are obsessed with this idea of infinite ores when a simple, a simple patch on Nauvis, that's 3.3 million, is going to effectively be like 300 million ore you know, between using legendary big drills and other stuff. And so it's just like, y you don't really need, like infinite isn't as valuable as it sounds because basic patches are kind of already infinite. Mm, how do I do this? The problem is I kind of want to just pick all that up. So I think I will. Um, and move this and that'll make things easier. I was just not wanting to have to pick that up is all. Uh, okay, so then the ice is kind of basically prioritized. And do I just need to recycle it? Or what do we need to do here? Because if we have too much ice, 
And we're already storing water, so that's not a big deal. By the way, can you prod this? You can if we really needed more water. Um, but we're already essentially ditching ammonia. So if we ditch ammonia and ice, then we're going to have a different problem, aren't we? So what we need to do is we need to ditch ice if... Okay, hold on. I, I have an idea. I don't know if it's a good idea, but I have an idea. Um, anyway, we'll, we'll grab our filter on that guy, and then I'll put all that in there. Okay, so that's step one. Step two is recycling. That's not a word. Uh, the ice, if we have too much of it. How fast does ice recycle? Really fast. Holy wow. Holy wowzers. Okay, so I can just get rid of whatever ice I want to here. Um, but I'm going to need heat. Maybe I need to use long inserters for this, uh, but I don't want to. Problem is I wanted to have two inserters that potentially run. Maybe I can still do that. Oh, this is getting messy. Um, Because what I want is for one of these, what am I trying to say? Basically, is this an and or an or? I, what I want to do is I want to recycle ice if we have enough ice platforms and our ammonia or, yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, if our heat isn't at max. If the heat is at max, then we don't need any more solid fuel. Or why, why not? Why not just always make solid fuel? There's no reason not to make solid fuel, right? So should I just let all the extra ice flow on by? Do I really need to care about this? I basically just don't want ice to flow by that could be used for platform if we need platform. But am I really get I'm never going to have that problem. Who am I kidding? Whatever. Just let it go. Uh, and we just need to filter this on ice. There should probably be stacks, actually. Slightly, slightly faster. Okay, I think that's fine, honestly. Yeah, Simeon, I do agree. Having a permanent setup that is absolutely infinite is nice. Um, but I do also think that a lot of the setups that aren't infinite, if you actually did the math, it's like, oh, this will run for 400 hours before I run out of ore. And then by that point, you'll have done so many more productivity researches that the rate that the patch is getting depleted continues to get lower, you know? And so it's like, it's not literally infinite, but it's like, are you going to play that long? And if you do, you're going to be able to just get one more iron patch. Um, so it's effectively infinite, I would say. Okay, let's do three of these. And then... No, I didn't want that. Um, and then the... These things are going to have to move. Like so. And then the oil. I don't remember how I did this before. That's going to come down here. And then, there we 
go. And now we can jam prod in that. And I am gonna avoid using the purple prods there because I don't think they're really necessary. And something like this. And then heat Goes down to there. Okay. What's up, SMO? How's it going? So there's lots of solid fuel. And that gets these guys running. I could probably add more, to be honest. I don't know how many we can constantly run, but that's that's probably enough. Because these are also extra efficient. So even, yeah, they're two and a half uh, times efficiency. So I'm actually getting 20, 30 megawatts, well, 30 megajoules out of each one. Um, but yeah, okay, so that's taken care of. I, I don't know why that took me so long. My brain's starting up slow today. Uh, SMO, I'm doing well. I'm excited to get cryogenic science, so let's figure that out real quick. So we need the fluoroketones. We already have ice and lithium. Oh, right, there's another thing that needs ice. Um, the recipe for this. What am I missing? There it is. Oh, it starts out being hot. Okay. So we need solid fuel, lithium, fluorine, and ammonia. All right, that's really easy. Um, where do I want to make that? Over here, maybe? I know it's kind of out of the way of my current setups, but I don't want to be too compact with everything. So solid fuel, lithium, I have no idea how much fluoroketone production I'm going to need. So we'll just set some up. And give ourselves some more land mass here. To work with. Let our sad bots figure it out. And fluorine will bring over hot fluoroketone. We need to immediately cool. I'm going to put it like this. Um, and that's just, we just process it. That's it. That's it. Okay. So then what, what we'll do is we will have some sort of tank connection and we'll have a pump in and we'll only allow that pump to run because we're going to get hot fluoroketones generated from other things. So we'll only run the pump if we're low. Oops, I didn't really need to filter it. That's not what I meant to do. Fluo, I always spell fluorine though, with the U and the O flipped. Uh, so if that's like less than 20,000 or maybe 10,000, we'll keep filling up the hot fluoroketone thing. And then there'll always be room for other hot fluoroketone to flow in. So that's that. And then this will be the cooling of the fluoroketones. Fluoroketone! I know that's not how you say it. Actually, I think that's not how you say it. Uh, all right, so then we cool, 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 cool. And then... We'll center that. Looks a little better, I guess. And, I mean, it could be kind of nice to have one that affects... I just tried to use... <laughs> I just tried to use picker dollies. Uh, it didn't work. Maybe I just do three of each. Is that going to be enough? It might be with beacons. Uh, we're definitely going to need some more rare modules, so let's go... Uh, send those down. 
Probably need a bunch of other stuff too. I don't know if I need LDS or whatever, but just in case, I want to send a rocket up soon. And then. I think that's good enough. I don't know how many belts I have, so I'll grab some rocket rounds. Alright, uh, and then you go back to Novus. And then. We'll do speed in this bad boy. And boom, boom, boom. That all works. Heat pipe. Across the front. I guess we'll attach to this one. And then this is where things are going to continue to be a little tricky. The flooring can come in from above. We're going to need two different solid inputs. But not at a super fast rate. So I'm thinking we can do that with ye old friend lung inserter. And then we need to flip these vertically. And then there's gonna be a belt here that will be warmed by So that'll work. And then... I guess this can just do that. For the ammonia. Well, I guess we have to wrap around. It's kind of annoying. But that does work. Oh, you know what? We have to get that back when heated anyway, so I might as well just do a whole, a whole row. All right. <sighs> Why not bundle the inserters? Bundle. Bundle the inserters. Like bundle them up in a scarf? I don't know what bundle means in this context. Lithium and solid belt. Okay, so lithium. Lithium's already on a belt. Like right here. I just need to combine that with solid fuel. Um, two next to each other. Uh, well, I don't really have room with how I set up the pipes. And I don't think I need more than one. I only need 0.75 a second on each, and stack size is four now on long inserters, so it's it's relatively quick. Now the solid fuel, we're gonna need output priority to the right. And we're gonna have all sorts of fun routing this over here. Help. <laughs> Help says the concrete, and Cardax agrees. Alright. Heat you up. Heat this up. Heat this up. Such spaghetti with heat pipes. This is insane. Absolutely insane. Alright. We are nice and hot, though. So then we've got solid fuel and we've got the whatchamacallit, the lithium. And then we want to get both of those on a belt going here.
So this. And I feel like closing the heat loop where you can is helpful just to equalize temperatures in different places. So I will do that. Yeah, there are probably more efficient ways I, I could make this build for sure with doing undergrounds and inserters different, but I don't know. We're done now. Uh, so now I need to bring the ammonia, which... Anything over 5,000 is going to lithium, and that should probably be the same um, setup. Or the same pipeline, I should say. It comes over here. Alright, so there's... Ingredient number three. Uh, yes, we do need to heat the building. I would have noticed that eventually. They just look so natural when they're nice and frosty, you know? They're a cryogenic plant, right? Wouldn't they be nice and frosty? Um, Alright, and then we need the fluorine, which is going to be a pain in the butt. Because it's all the way over here. So, the fluorine... Um... heat that's perfect because that stays heated and then that works there that works there okay so that's fluorine to here and that's heated so we're to here so now we need to come across a little more lights everywhere and yeah 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 okay so this Of course, this is still in the way. Perfect. All right. No, oh, I needed that. And we ah need one here. And then these guys. Uh oh, the help got unhelped. hotkey properly. I, I'm having to shift build everything because there's so many little ice squares that I can't build on. So I probably should lay down more concrete. So that's not a problem anymore. <laughs> I'm building on Aquila with such ease. You were so burned out at this point that everything was driving you crazy. It, it certainly I'm, I'm choosing to just take the whatever approach. I think I think I would be driven crazy if I wasn't uh, paying attention to my emotions because it, it is kind of frustrating you know and like oh my gosh everything needs heat and it it forces spaghetti on you and i think i'm just you know and you guys know me well enough at this point to know that i'm generally happy to just live with the spaghetti and i think that's helped and there it is fluoro ketones of the hot variety hot hot damn and now we got cold damn perfect and the rates... Oh yeah, we need way more coolers. I assume you cannot prod this. Yep, that was a correct assumption. So I might as well save a little bit of electricity. Oh my god, I just realized that's an absurd amount of electricity. Um, let's... Let's do this. And then I'm gonna put... One of each. So then I'm... Still making things overall faster, but also saving quite a bit of power there. Um, in fact, why don't we do all three like that? 
Wait, that's not what I meant. There we go. Now why? Oh, I was like, why is that not saving power? <laughs> it's because of uh, eight modules that all add 80% energy consumption inside of each of these buildings. That's hilarious. Yeah, doing doing Aquilo properly, I think, requires just taking some time to build blueprints carefully. And then probably, I actually think some sort of main bus is actually the best way to do it on Aquilo, where you have a heated bus, right? And you have some, you have like a left, I mean, assuming the bus goes left and right, I'm almost thinking like a two-way bus where a lot of materials flow both directions, maybe loop around even, and then you use circuits to control when to take off and put things in. And then you kind of have this nice centralized like hub of where all the items are. And then you can build these separate builds that are nicely lined up with heat pipes where you want them to be and probably do heating for each build with its own little set of heating towers. And then you don't have to keep everything as close together or whatever. But all this being said, I now need some speed modules in these, which I need rare speed modules too on this Enthuse. Why are we, oh, I wonder if the Hendrickson is struggling. Uh, it's struggling because we're not getting rare EMPs. Um, probably great reasons for that. Yeah, it's just because I'm not re-rolling uncommons. That's all. Um, do I care to make that better? Did I bring prod threes? I did bring rare prod threes, which would greatly improve my chances of getting. And if I recycle the uncommons, we'll get uncommon parts. So, I actually think this is worth it. Let me grab... Ah! Let me grab rare prod threes. Um, or, I, I'm saying prod. I mean quality. This is what I'm trying to do here. And then you are going to... Well, I guess what we can do is set filter. And then we can just output. If we have normals, we have enough. Screw normals. I don't need normals anymore. Just completely screw it. We're only making rares and better from now on. That's what we're doing. Yeah, I like that. I like that approach. F it, we'll do it live. All right, so you just filter for EMP and EMP uncommon. We're recycling all of those. And they just get recycled. Get recycled, idiot. Um, and then that should end up accumulating a lot of rares over time. And then this guy needs to have modules because he's going to also be ending up making rares. But he'll also end up making a lot of uncommons, which means I need to recycle uncommons that end up in here. So I will also recycle these guys. I know technically regulars don't show up, but... Um, and that's the wrong kind of belt. I don't have greens. I think that'll do it. This recycler's gonna have its work cut out for it for a while, but... Okay, I, I think that works. Wait, doing Aqualo feels like shipping ammonia and fluorite to Fogora? Wait, I don't know. Would 
you can't make um, half the stuff you need. You can't make with. What am I looking for? Ammonia. Okay, ammonia. I mean, you can make the fuel. Oh, you can make fluoroketones anywhere, but that doesn't matter because the stuff you make with fluoroketones you can't make anywhere. You can only make the quantum processors here. You can only make. I guess you can make lithium anywhere. But that feels. Maybe this is what you're talking about, making lithium here. That feels like more work than shipping holmium to Aquila, though. And these don't have speed on them, right? Quality 20%, quality 20%. Yeah, we should be okay. Now, I would love for this to be an uncommon recycler. <laughs> That'll make things a little faster. All right, all right, all right. So, that's all done. Uh, that was me just realizing I didn't have enough superconductors flowing. Is that because... What am I trying to do? It's just because the Hendrickson doesn't make the rounds very often. So maybe I should do like 4,000. Oh, we're almost out of space. Um, yeah, and then that will bring up more per trip. And then when we on Nauvis, I just love the way this thing looks. It's so cute. It's like a little animal. Uh, and then we need to request. We are requesting 4,000. Okay. What can be done where is so arbitrary? Yeah, it. I, I do agree. There are times where, like, I personally am one for just more choice is better in most cases. So I think I think there's too many restrictions, just in a general sense. I do really like the science being restricted to the planet. Um, some of the other restrictions I, I could personally do without. But at the same time, it's one of those things where I don't know if I've put enough thought into it to know for sure that that's what I think. Um, because there's a world where I could be convinced it's better for the game to have the restrictions the way they are. Or at least most of them. Okay, so we're getting there. We're getting there. Now I need nothing. I can make cryogenic science now. That's crazy. Um, we just need ice, lithium plates, and these cold ketones. Okay. And we have lithium plates right here. Which are really only used in two things. I know they're technically used in power cells and cryogenic plants. I guess foundation something I want to start making too. Oh, I need to bring tungsten plates and stone for that. <sighs> Maybe I yeah, won't care about that. Um, foundation is the kind of thing you'd want to automate if you were going towards mega basing the other planets. I, d I guess I don't really need it at this point. Maybe I won't. Okay, so then... We need lithium. <laughs> How are we gonna do this? Um, so the lithium... up here maybe and then... and then what was it we needed lithium and I already forgot the ice okay and then the ice we have I might need to rebuild this, which is really unfortunate because it's all kind of locked in here, isn't it? Uh, maybe I do a separate ice situation. But then the problem is we have too much ammonia again.
which is really weird. And there's no easy way to just delete ammonia. I find that really interesting. I mean, I guess both of, both of these help, but you st it still requires more work to get that done. There's no just like way to get rid of it. Would recycling an ice platform be the best way to delete it? No, surely not. Surely not. Endar, welcome. You've been playing along with the Space Age series? Yeah, glad to have you here. Whatever it is, it seems like I already have too much. Um, so let's just not recycle the ice. Um, shoot. Maybe I do that. And then I have a filter. And we filter ice to the right. Ice is nice. And then we output priority left. Okay. So then we have ice here. That'll, that'll come this way before it gets trashed. And then we can bring it over. Maybe. Like so. So there's ice. Yeah, the problem isn't isn't the ice, it's that if I wanted to make ice somewhere else separately, then I would need to then get rid of even more ammonia. And I don't really want to do that. So I'd like to bring the ice over and down. This music is haunting. Creepy AF. All right, um, heat pipes everywhere. Classic, Aquilo. Just Aquilo things. Um, of course, it's on the wrong side of the belt. They're both on that side. So I guess actually what we want then is just this. There we go. Ta-da! Oh, and I forgot a stack inserter, right? Uh, wait, did I? Oh, they're not stacked. Okay, I can stackify them easily enough. And then we'll have stacked lithium. And then what? Then we need fluoroketones and that stuff. And we're good to go. And I need more cryo plants. Why don't I automate that officially? I don't keep running out. Because I want a bunch of these for other planets, too. Um. We'll do something like this. And then we need the lithium requested. How do I do that? This is requesting from space doodads, though. I need the lithium in a chest. And I will use bots for that, that's fine. And then I can put some lithium in there, I guess, if I need to. Um. All right, there we go. Cryogenic plants automated. That's fine. Ba, ba, ba. Cryogenic science. Now we are going to want to belt this back. You know, the biters are getting increasingly aggressive. Pizza is aggressive. Um, probably because I keep giving them reasons to be mad.
Yes, the true pasta of Factorio is just the, the giving up and using bots. <laughs> it is the ultimate spaghetti. Alright, well, let's go full prod here. I don't know. I guess we brought some more modules. And what else was I trying to bring? Oh, yeah, the carbon fiber and the tungsten carbide. Right, so we'll deliver all that. And then... That should make things happy. Okay, and we're gonna need a rocket silo down here. Uh, we'll figure that out in a minute. But... For now, let's get some science makers. This is probably way too many. Shouldn't those be getting made by the bots in the- what? Oh god. What? Wait, are you serious? That's what happens? It spills everything on the ground? Rather than just refusing to send it? That feels weird. That's certainly a design decision. Or is this some weird edge case that I ran into? Because that, it feels like it just shouldn't send it. That feels really messed up to me. <laughs> like, that feels like Renai transportation kind of janky, rather than, like, you know, this is a digital system that can actually just ask where it's sending if it has enough inventory. I don't know, that, that feels weird. Maybe I did something weird. Like, maybe I had more slots and then slots disappeared when it was on the way. But nothing's getting put into this cargo landing pad, so I don't think that could have happened. Interesting. Either way, I did force them to send, but but it shouldn't. It. My opinion is that if you have things here, they just shouldn't get sent if there's no room in the destination. Um. It shouldn't just dump it on the ground. That that doesn't feel that that doesn't feel like Factorio to me. That feels like Renai transportation. <laughs> um, I don't I don't totally get that. Maybe I did. I don't know. It just that just feels weird to have things dump on the ground as part of like a fairly normal interaction. Because there's really no way to get items dumped on the ground, short of. Uh, actually, can you even do it anymore? Because now when you take off armor, it doesn't do that. Or at least it gives you a warning at the minimum now. So it's like... It's kind of hard to do that. If you need something and the inventory is full. Yeah, I mean, I guess there's some world where you have... No, because if you can clean up what's on the ground from a remote view, that means you could have accessed the inventory already. I guess... I guess you may be in a situation where you have the bots and a bot network, but you don't have the ability to build new chests, like logistic chests, and so you need to drop something and it ends up on the ground, but then you can clean that up from the ground in a way that you couldn't have moved items from in the inventory of the silo? Is that possible? I'm really stretching here for a use case for that. I don't even know if there's a situation where where you would need something to end up on the ground. Um, and you couldn't just take an item out of the inventory to clear space. I, it might be possible. I, it's probably not worth my time to keep thinking about that, but uh, it, it might be possible. It might. Uh, let me just copy that. If you have empty yellow chests, but the cargo pod is full, then you could just move the items with the logistics bots, though. By doing the, the thing in remote view where you just click on the spot, the bots will come and take it. 
So you could already do that. Uh, yeah, so I really, I'm really struggling. And, and if anything, TNT, I don't think it... I mean, it limits confusion if there was something in the platform that just wasn't sending and there was no indication, but it could pretty easily just have a little icon that pops up and says destination full, like a little error, like the little eye inside the circle or a little asterisk or a little caution triangle. I mean, there, there's, there's a lot of ways to keep the player from being confused on why it's not sending if you've made the decision that things won't send. So I don't think that's really an issue. Anyway, it's really not a big deal. I just wasn't expecting that. All right, what am I doing? No, no, no. We need undergrounds. It. I. All the, I don't know. I think. I think that that actually might be a thing that could be a big deal. It just wasn't for me. But that would be a massive deal if you didn't know that's how it worked, like I didn't and you were just up in space sending tens of thousands of items and you just got yourself into that situation for the first time and you didn't know they were gonna spill on the ground and now all of a sudden you have a half <laughs> kilometer, square kilometer full of items. I don't know, I don't love that. Oh, oh, that was just uh, egg spawning, I think. Yeah, look, I'm sure there's some crazy case where it's helpful. I, but the the question remains of like, would it be better to find a different way to solve that case than to just dump things on the ground? Because most players are going to run into the things just get dumped on the ground and it's getting in my... It's frustrating rather than... Oh yeah, this is a really helpful system. It probably is to prevent some sort of deadlock somewhere. I, I'm, I'm imagining that's what it has to do with. But it certainly is not kind of expected behavior. Okay, so we've got all these guys. I do need more prod module rares because I think that's what we're using here. Eh, I guess I might as well use that. Where else am I going to use the epics if not here? Um... Uh, we are going to need beacons for sure. Kind of a problem though with beacons, isn't it? Because we're going to have to dodge. So maybe I should do pairs for the inserting. And that works nicely because that's how it, you know, the undergrounds work. Like that. Um, I'm going to flip those though. Two inserters per cryo factory? Uh, I doubt it. I don't know. I'm just presuming they're too slow for that. But we can always test it. All right, speed. How much power are these gonna take? Woo, doggies, 20 megawatts piece. Nice, nice. Factory become unpowered. Yeah, I guess if you didn't have any bots and it was unpowered, but if you don't have any bots and it's unpowered, what's... And you're on the planet yourself, then you might want the items to land on the ground, I guess. But if that's the case, then you can just take items out of the silo's inventory. So no, I still don't see it. I'm still not seeing it. Um, again, I believe it's there. I'm not seeing it. I'm sure there will be YouTube comments telling me why I'm wrong or whatever, but at least for the average use case, I think it's it's better that items wouldn't end up on the ground than they do. All right, well, do that, do that, do that. I just realized we are gonna need more heat there. And y'all, we got our first, our first blue science packs. Look at them. Look at them go. Oh, that's what you mean by bundled the inserters. You just mean putting pairs of buildings next to each other. All right, so now we have science and that needs to get put into platforms. Platforms are going to need 
rocket silos, not platforms. Well, silos send items to platforms. Um, but silos are going to need rocket parts, and rocket parts are going to need... Maybe to go on a belt? Maybe I'll just let bots do it? I mean, we're already talking about not needing that many rocket parts. As is, by putting, you know, 80% product. I only need 75 items to make a whole rocket. Um, and then on top of that... Uh, I mean, we're going to get the rocket part productivity going. Um... Right now I'm deciding if I want to belt the LDS and rocket fuel and blue chips. Where are my blue chips? Are they all in my inventory, I guess? Um, or if I just want to use bots. I really need higher quality bots is the problem because their charging is so garbage on this planet. But if I'm not taking it very far, if I have the silos like right here, that's not a big deal. Um, so yeah, maybe, maybe I'll just do it that way. I, oh, I need to make the silos, eh? Eh? Uh, we need a thousand steel and a thousand concrete. Cool. Um, and we don't have enough steel. Okay. And we're no longer requesting steel? Is that, is that right? I took that off of the Aquilo upkeep. Nice work, Crydex. Nice, nice, nice. Okay. Cool, 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 cool. All right. Well, that sucks. Um, back to Novice we go. It's gonna take a minute, and then yeah, I really want like uncommon. Uh, no, let's be honest. I want epic or legendary logistics robots, because then they would actually be able to fly for a while. The epic ones have four times the charge. Which means, well, they fly for four times as long. Which is almost as long as they'd fly on Navis. Because Aquilo is five times the battery drain. So. And then, obviously, it helps to have better quality RoboPorts, too. Isn't that 6x the charge? Uh, the legendary is 6x. I was just talking epic. Epic. Oh, that's where all my blue circuits went. Ah, ha. Um. Okay, so maybe we need to request a few more of those little blue chips then. Is 3,000 too many? I'm really filling up the inventory here, I realize. Might need to keep expanding the side cargo bay here. It's got a tumor. Alright, there we go. How is power on Aquilo? I guess we can't really tell till these are running constantly, but those do take a lot. Not that I can see how much, because it's over there and too big. 18.73, okay. That's like 100 megawatts for all these. Not terrible. And then we're gonna need... To belt this over somehow. weird. I'm doing that just so I can do that. Um, my goodness. What am I doing? Alright. So somewhere up here are going to be the silos.
Cool. Wait. Why didn't I just... I could just go underground here. Ah, well. Too late now. Woob did such an amazing animation for platforms. Snow appears and melts in one frame. <laughs> Honestly, I I think I said this in a different episode. I think it'd be really cool if when you whenever you're building things remotely, when a construction bot builds it, if it had a little animation of building like it does on space platforms. I think that would be really neat. Um Okay, so on the way, all sorts of things. Cool, cool, cool. Oh, there's already a thousand requested. Okay, so I'm requesting maybe a bit more than I wanted to. Because those add together. And then it seems... Available on the planet, we don't have enough carbon fiber? Is the Glabian Nightmare... It's only delivering a thousand carbon fiber a trip. Um, what are we requesting on the ground? I'm only requesting 2,000. Yeah, that should be more like 4,000. Just let it build up over time. 500 of those, yeah, 2,000. Okay. And then the silo. Me. Eh. Um. We'll eventually have two of them, I think. Requester chest. For all the... That's not a requester chest. There we go. For all the rocket part stuff, we'll do a hundred of each thing. Hundred LDS. That's not a hundred. Perfect. And then, yeah, this will just be our our loading. Um, I could load it with inserters, but what I might just do is put a provider chest like as close to the silo as possible. Uh, that seems a little easier. And then it allows for a better buffer that way. And yeah, I'll just do it. And the bots can charge over here all they want. The new the new ghost wobble animations I actually think is really cool. I I I'm very grateful for it. I think the wobble might be a bit much. The new color though and the look of them I think is A plus. I could see how some people don't like the wobbly part. I think it's cool. I haven't really I haven't had any issues with it. So that's more of a personal preference, I guess. Now, why is none of this getting built? We're missing concrete. We're missing regular storage chests. And we're missing silos. That's why. Ah, the inserters! We need underground heat pipes yesterday. I did see there's a mod for underground heat pipes. <laughs> it does exist. Okay, Senthus, are you happy yet? What are you doing over here? 
Oh, you just... Okay, you're good. You're good. Come back. We just didn't have enough carbon fiber. But the Glabian Nightmare should be... Bringing some back. A.K.A. the square that flies. With about four times more chem plants than it actually needs. But it works! It sure works, don't it? I do like the, the design of this ship. What I might do, if I were to, to make another version of it, I would just make it a little longer. Um, and then I would move all this stuff down, you know, another 10 tiles, maybe 15. And then I would have room for cargo bays kind of in this, this section right here. Um, because it all did fit at the end of the day. It just didn't leave enough room for cargo. Which there were at least, I think, two people saying in, in the chat. I was originally intending it to not be the thing that would bring science back from Aquilo, but I just need to be lazy right now. So I'm, I'm going to use it to bring the science back. I also think I underestimated how many trips we were going to need filled with stuff. But yeah, this design certainly works pretty well. And it's ditching all the extra, the extra stuff pretty well. Maybe. Maybe I need more of these to ditch all the extra asteroids. I can always copy this setup somewhere else along the side. I, think I could put it right here and it would just do the same thing. Copy that. And I should be able to just super force build it and it just hashtag works. Yeah, there we go. Simeon, I felt like I wasted a ton of space on this one too. The thing that I think was helpful, if I were to make another ship, I think what I would do is design the outer loops first to get that going. Then do your engines and pa and and if you're doing if you're doing you know place your engines at least and the pipes to provide that, but not like the actual production of fuel. And then at that point you kind of have a core of like, okay, now everything just needs to attach to these outer systems. And then it's kind of just figuring out, okay, where do you put your power generation if you're using nuclear or fu- Can you do- f I think you can do fusion in space. I actually haven't looked at that yet. What? What is going on here? Apparently, I tried to make a rocket silo in space, but we didn't have the electric engines and I just didn't do anything else with it. So we have a ton of items in this. Right. I loosely remember this now. I had planned to make the rocket silo up here, but then I didn't have electric engines. If I deconstruct this, will all the parts go back in here? Uh, I don't think they did. I think we just deleted 2000 stuff. Fun. Fun! All right, let's send down the concrete. Actually, maybe... No, there was 2,000 steel in there, and I definitely don't have 2,000 steel. But the concrete maybe didn't get deleted. Huh. Maybe it kept some of the items, but not all of them? I don't know what just happened there. Oh no, are we dumping items on the ground here? Again? Oh gosh. Let's not do that. Let us not do that. Uh, all right, so steel, concrete. Do we have enough rocket silo? And then electric engines. Yeah, the asteroid belt isn't supposed to be super full, though. That's the point. 
it's supposed to have room on it for the collectors to add to. Uh, anyway, di did I delete the electric engine? Yeah, I did. There is no request for electric engines. Okay. So the Synthus needs to do another run. Ooh, were we out of prod threes? Of the rare variety, that is? Huh. Um, yes, because I have enough epics. I just, I really wish there was a way to be like rares or epics, you know, rather than having to separately request both. And then the ship is going to consider its request not to be satisfied unless both of those are filled to 50, even though I would prefer it to be like, hey, as long as I have 50 of rare or higher, I'm happy. I don't know. The all requests satisfied is an unsatisfying uh, condition because you can't have any sort of optional conditions. It's like if you're requesting anything, even if you don't care that much about it, it's going to prevent this from being satisfied. So you really need to have like a combinator that's measuring against everything. And then you need to just send a signal when those requests are met. Cause basically then you can say, these are the things I care the most about. Those, once those are met, you can leave. And these are the things I'm also going to request, but I'm not going to need them to be on the space platform before I leave. And those are like two different things that I feel like a lot of people are going to want to be able to do that, but you have to use combinators to do it. It would be nice if you could do it without combinators. Um, but that's fine. I guess you can, I mean, you could put certain item. Well, no, not really. Uh, you would have to do the item count for every single item. That's that's absurd. <laughs> yeah, no, I know you can do an or time pass, but then the problem is you might be waiting for 10 minutes or whatever when all of your required conditions were met after 60 seconds. And it's just the optional ones that are unmet for the next nine minutes like that's happening on the Glabian nightmare already sometimes yeah I mean combinators are kind of the solution to everything in the game at this point ah oh, I forgot to drop down the blue circuits yeah that's fine it's Get this going a little faster I don't know if that's enough speed given that it's purple speed threes and purple beacons it should be going pretty pretty jamming here but we'll see oh you can't put right because it's a ghost i have to get ghost item. it's just like ghost ammo i can put ghost epic modules in but i can't you can't put real modules in which will then create a ghost of it feature request All right, so once we have blue chips, we should be good on making rocket parts. And then we're going to start sending cryogen. Oh, no, these are stopped. Why are they stopped? Uh Oh, you know, there's a really good reason for that. I completely forgot to hook back up the hot ketone. Um, not hook back up, just hook up in the first place. The hot ketone recycling. I guess it has to be that way. And I'm out of pipes, of all things? That's funny. Um, okay, so how do I do this without really breaking everything? We need that, that. Bring the heat. Perfect. All right, now we're 
or now we're cooking. Or kind of the opposite of cooking. Now we're cooling. <laughs> now we're cooling. And our power net. Oh, our power is not okay. Um, we need more heat. We're just gonna copy that. And I'm gonna hope for the best. <laughs> Let's see if that all gets finished. Oh my gosh, we're so low on iron. Are we requesting iron plates again? I deleted all those requests for reasons that now escape me. I need those things. And the Holmium is... Maybe I changed it and then forgot to keep it on Nalvis. Uh, do I power and heat the base with one heat network? Yes. Yes, I do. Is it a good idea? No idea. That is how we're doing it. Alright, we'll see if those get hot enough. Oh, uh, we just dumped a fuel cell in. Probably because we built all these heat pipes. Uh, let's connect that one across the top here. Oh, we're out of heat pipes, huh? Oh, we have... Just build fusion power. Yeah, you know, we should look into that. We should look into that, shouldn't we? Uh, why this no worky? Oh, it's just not hot enough yet. It's much more manageable when split. Uh, I actually don't think that's true, at least not in a general, like, that's always true sense, because to my understanding, things that need to be heated are going to consume the same amount of energy regardless of how hot the heat pipe is that's next to it. So your base being able to run is just consuming a certain amount of heat on Aquilo and your power running is also consuming a certain amount of heat and the temperatures are irrelevant for all of that the only thing that matters is when you're when you're burning fuel when you're already at 999.99 c that's the only time you're actually wasting energy everything else you're gonna have to spend the energy somewhere somehow anyway um so you're not really saving power by separating networks or anything it is true that you're spending an extra amount of buffer heat if you're making your base warming loop, you know, 500 degrees, because it really only needs to be 30 or whatever. But that's only a one-time cost. It's not a constant cost. So at the end of the day, it's just a little bit of power that you're talking about. All right, so it actually seems like ice is the limiting factor right now. And that's because I cannot get rid of enough uh, solid fuel, which means I need more of these.
<laughs> Unless I deadlock the whole thing and everything freezes. Yes, that would be bad. That would do it. But even then, because I have... Assuming, at least while I'm here personally, that wouldn't really be a problem because I could just plop heating towers and hand feed them with solid fuel. The issue would be if I was off planet, then it then it can't be fixed very easily. But bots do, even if they're in a network with no power, I think bots will still run once. So if you were really careful about where and how you place things, it might work out okay. But yeah, then they'd try to charge and then it wouldn't work. <laughs> Is that true? If you're completely out of power, will the does the bot network work? And then the logistics bots just can't charge? Or do they not run at all? I'm so infrequently in a dead base, like power-wise, I don't actually know how that works. That's funny. Oh my gosh, we're at an hour and a half. I need to be done with this episode, don't we? Um... Oh, the rocket capacity is 400 on electric engines. That's why that's not working. Okay. I thought we fixed this. No, we fixed it for a different item, I guess. We fixed that for a different item. Oh my gosh. Blue assemblers with no modules? What is happening over here? You can tell I haven't touched the base in a while. Say you haven't redone your base without saying you haven't redone your base. Man, blue assemblers, huh? The funny part is I don't really feel the need to replace them because... This is... It's not like I need that many electric engines anyway. Um, maybe once I think about doing more of the rare robot types, we might need it. Okay, we're almost at 400. So I'm not gonna lie, um... This is getting into some of my, like... I I'll definitely make a whole video about it, and I'll probably have it half scripted at least, because I, I want to make the points I'm trying to make clearly, which... You know, when I'm just pros verbal processing on the fly, it doesn't work as well. But these are some of my, like, Space Age final thoughts and, like you know, like, how it went kind of stuff. I do think that having five planets increases by an order of magnitude the mental anguish of redoing your base. Because now you have to redo five bases. And for some people, that's actually really fun. And that's, like, part of the draw. For other people, that actually makes the game feel far more insurmountable. Because it's one thing to be like, oh, I have to go back to Nalvis and improve all my stuff there. But then it's like, well, but then I also have to go to Vulcanus and put a bunch of stuff on a platform and take that to Vulcanus and then improve everything there. And then I have to do that to Gleba and improve every... And it just feels like this, like... that. I feel like that can feel like a slog for a lot of people. And, and that's not inherently, like... It's not intrinsically good. It can be good. I think for some people it's good. For some people it's 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 a not good. And so I think for some people they are going to find that aspect of Space Age more frustrating because rather than having one big base that they can kind of improve in one big wave, they have five different bases that they have to improve in these very discrete waves that like you can't just do one big wave all the way through. Yes, and and as for whether that's necessary or not, I'm not I'm not talking about that. You guys are right, but that's not the point I'm making. Yeah, that, of course that's not necessary. I'm probably gonna win without ever going back and improving the three planets. And I've improved Nalvis quite a bit, but even then I didn't rebuild it. I just kind of added in the, uh, <laughs> you know, the foundries and the EMPs uh, to make things really nice. Um, but yeah, I haven't I haven't done much at all to these other three planets, and I probably won't need to to win. So in that sense, it's fine. I do think there is a category of people who kind of want a mega base, but don't want a mega base five bases, if that makes sense. And I think that can be a, a con uh, for Space Age. Is it's it's dis uh, what's the word? It's disjointed your base. 
Whereas before you had one big base and that was your baby and that's what you took care of and that's what you worked on forever if you were mega basing and now you have five separate bases and that it's just a different experience is I think the best way I can say it. And some people like that about it and they like the different feelings that they're going to get. And I think some people are going to not like it and and that's OK, too. Like, it's just a opinion. Um, I have a phone call. One moment. All right, we're back. Sorry. Uh, car insurance nonsense. Always a good time. Um, so anyway, uh, yes, space mega basing is great. Uh, yeah, I didn't even mention there's a whole sixth. There's a whole sixth dimension when you're thinking about all the things you have to overhaul, and that's all your space platforms, which technically is an infinite number of bases, but I do kind of feel like space as a whole kind of feels like one thing. These are almost like trains. But no, they're bases too, you know, you have to have a whole blueprint. So it's maybe maybe halfway to being its own base in terms of like what these feel like. I know some people are going so big on space platforms that like they have bigger designs on space platforms than they do on planets, um, you know, but all that being said, my main point is just that the game now is um, there's a word that I it's like not segregated, not delineated, not it's just chunk. It's put into different chunks now. There are different silos, so to speak, you know, and, and your work is going into these different chunks. And that's very different. In my opinion, that's a different feel than when all of your work is going into this one big chunk, which is your base, which is how the game worked previously, right? Because there was only one planet. And so I, I do think that is a different feel and there are some downsides to it. I've experienced a little bit of that. I, I don't think overall I'm going to um, put it like for me, I think it's more of a pro than it is a con. But I have I have experienced some of that, like not loving of it too like there's been some of that that's been a con for me so I, I do think that's an interesting like topic around space age and how it kind of fundamentally changes factorio is it yeah compartmentalized is a good word for it it's still not the word my brain is thinking of sometimes I, i'm looking for a word that doesn't exist like my brain thinks there's a better word for what i'm trying to say and there just isn't <laughs> but like my brain's convinced no there's a word out there if you just think harder you'll think of the word you're looking for um, it's also very possible I'm just forgetting the word. Look at all this cryogenic science that we've already got. Um, yeah, so for something like multiplayer, it's actually, in most cases, probably a, a plus. Because then people can be on different planets working on these kind of like automatically compartmentalized sections of the base. Rather than, you know, previous Factorio where you kind of, as players, had to figure out how to divvy up responsibilities. Obviously, if you have different planets, it's a very clear delineation of like, oh, you can go work on the Fulgora base for a while and make it so that, you know, we're getting legendary electromagnetic plants go in. And, and like, that's a very clear task that has boundaries to it. That's really helpful for multiplayer, for sure. All right, it's here finally. Um, I know we should be done with this YouTube recording. We're an hour and a half in, but at this point, how could I not finish out the science um, and and show us transporting science to whatchamacallit uh navis navis is the place i'm trying to, to say all right um dude. i guess i can put them over there ended up picking up a bunch at some point. Okay, so we've got plenty of stuff for some rockets. I probably need some more fuel, if anything. Let me drop some more fuel down here. And then, and then we want in the Synthus, we've got plenty of space and we want to request cryogenic science 4,000? And then we want to turn this on automatic requests. Turn that on automatic requests. I need to grab 
some steel and engines. Craft a second silo. Ah, delicious water. Go hydrate at home, you. You at home who isn't hydrated. Change that. Mmm. Water's so good. Just like all this ice. Ice melting going on here on Aquilo. Alright, what's... Is it going? There it goes. There it goes. Let's see if it's fast enough to rebuild before the second one is filled. Or I mean ready to launch. Oh yeah, that's more than fast enough. I... That's actually a really interesting point. I, I'm not enough of a mega baser. Part of why... I, I didn't totally finish my earlier thought either. Part of why what I was talking about isn't as big of a deal for me is because I haven't done a ton of mega basing in the past and I just tend not to in general. There might be a mega base series at some point, but that being said, I have seen enough posts online that it does seem like when you're mega basing, having everything be one little point, and you basically have to surround that point with a bunch of robo ports and then tile your cargo bays out in one direction so that you can place robo ports around it. Because even legendary uh, stack inserters, you know, completely surrounding it is still like a fairly low rate compared to the no total number of items you might want to move. I don't think I love that. I really liked. They made an FFF about it. I really liked how they didn't just allow you to put cargo landing pads wherever you want, however many you want. So I think the I think the balance might be somewhere in the middle, where in the ultra late game, as you are getting towards um, a mega base, I think it could be good to allow the player to research a second, a maybe third, maybe fourth uh, cargo landing pad. And, and that's it. Like, you don't have to be give it, you know, being, like, some sort of infinite research. You could make it an infinite research with, like, an absurd cost. So it's, like, a cubic cost or something. So the first one is, like, expensive but reasonable. The second one is kind of crazy. And the third one is already getting to, like, absurd levels of, like, that will take you 10 hours in a mega base kind of cost. That, that could work, but I think more or less, even just adding a couple more cargo landing pads in the ultra, ultra late game would really help with some of those issues that players are having. Um, I know there's already mods for it, I think. Actually, wait, am I remembering that right? I think there's mods for more cargo landing pads, but I don't know exactly how they work uh, in terms of logistics because the game isn't really set up for that right now because when you send items down, I guess, I guess the question is, if you put them here, where would they go? Most of the time you're requesting items from the rocket, but I don't know what happens if you send them and you have multiple pads. In two days, there was a modder that already found the number. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's that's what I figured. All right, uh, do we have the 4,000? We do. Let's go back to Navis. Let's set up our requests real quick. Um, but again, you know, we come back to the idea of like, the, it doesn't really matter for most players because the amount of packs you need, the amount of items you need flowing through a given port per second is not so high that that, that restriction is going to matter for a lot of people. But I do think it's weird that like, there's no option to increase it at any point. All right, so we'll just get 10 packs dumped into the network here. 10 packs, 10,000 packs, really what I meant to say there. And then we need to do our little science merry-go-round here, which has been really fun to make. So cool. Uh, did I already set it up? Yeah, I already set it up ready to go, so all I need to do is request 
a thousand packs here. And then we need to basically measure this same way, but do it on cryo packs. Cryogenic science pack. And I think we're doing 400 for most of them. 200. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What the? Hot? What the heck? What in God's green Nalvis Earth is going on here? Um, laser turrets. How, how? Did they expand into the wall and over a cliff somewhere? Or what is going on here? Mm. <laughs> okay, I... Are you serious? That's ridiculous. I want to wrap up the episode, but I want to get science done first. I am very confused on... On what happened here. Oh, I know what happened. Some spo some eggs spoiled in, in the... Which I thought we... We have no bioflux. That's what's going on. Uh-oh. Oh no. Alright, all sorts of things are going wrong. Gleba is kill. I don't know what happened, but the base is the whole base is dead. Nothing's flowing. Um, okay, well, that being uh, next episode's problem. Uh, for now, <laughs> uh, let's see. For now, let's double check. Where's our science? Do we have the blue packs? No, not yet. Why not? We didn't request it here. That's why. Rip indeed. I uh, am interested to find out what happened there. Anyway, uh, biters just not dying automatically when they spawn literally over a lake feels a bit jank to me. Like, are you serious? This, this has got to be patched out. This has to be patched out in 2.1. That, like, to be kind, this is kind of unacceptable. <laughs> like, that's all there is to it. <laughs> like, that just doesn't make any sense. Lore-wise, it doesn't make any sense. Gameplay-wise, it just doesn't make sense. He is very confused, that poor biter. Um, someone needs to put him out of his misery. <laughs> Alright, so... We're there! We did it! Cryogenic science pack! Woohoo! Let's start with... Legendary quality. Yeah, no, what it needs to do is when you drop a biter in the water, it... It has a small chance to evolve into a water biter, and then it makes a water biter base, and then the whole lake gets filled with biters. Uh, <laughs> wait a second. Oh, I don't have any Glaba science. Okay, we'll do we'll do those sciences in the next <laughs> episode, I guess. Um, we'll keep streaming if you're here live. Don't go anywhere. But for those of you uh, from the future on YouTube, as always, uh, thank you for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comments below, and we'll see you all in the next episode.